Hello everybody and welcome to another interesting episode of Radio Rama. And this time, this is going to be something a little bit different. This is um, something rather special and I thought I'd never see one of these in person. But it is a 1938 Zenith radio nurse. It's uh, essentially an early electronic baby monitor. The uh, nurse head, you as you will, would go in the, the baby's room. They also marketed these to people that had invalids. And then this is the uh, not as exciting looking receiver end. This would be, you know, in the bedroom or wherever. And so this acts like a microphone. It transmits to this receiver. Um, th these are significant. This was designed by a very famous artist, a Japanese-American, Asumo Noguchi. I believe I'm probably butchering his name, but a uh, pretty world-famous industrial designer. Quite a story, this man. Um, very talented. He designed uh, everything from furniture to, well, as you see here, electronics. Um, and for, well, designed for industrial electronics. <laughs> And um, he did, um, I believe, outdoor architectural design as well. He um, was, unfortunately, I believe, almost deported during World War II because the United States at the time did something pretty shameful that a lot of Americans are didn't even know about until years later, which was the internment of other Americans, basically Japanese Americans, ridiculous in of its own. Uh, the area I live in in California has been settled by folks from Japan for as long as it's been settled by everyone else that came here. So they're just as American as everybody else, and the fact that they were put in the camps was a shameful part of our history. But um, I'm glad to have gotten this piece to work on. It belongs to the museum's president who paid a decent amount for it and usually these guys you only see them in museums usually art museums because it is art i'm going to try to take a more careful approach to restoring it hence why i have nice soft stuff to put it on i'm going to get individual jars for the little screws and everything and uh, then we're going to take a look inside. I already took a look at the schematic. There's not much going on. I had to get some parts that I didn't have on hand so I could start the process. So here we go. All right, well, here it is. It's definitely <clears throat> form factored in here. Even the bottom of the chassis is round. Curious. It looks like... Not sure that's supposed to be coming loose like that. I'm wondering if there's a screw missing. Yeah, there's only one screw holding the bottom on, so <clears throat> something has come loose. And so I'll need to take a look at some pictures. Um, the owner, when he handed it to me, he said something sounded loose inside. And what it is is it appears that during transit. And this tube, the envelope smashed up against the speaker here. Very compact little unit. You've got a, tra a power transformer and three tubes crammed into this little body here. I'd love to know what kind of tube this is. All let's see is five. Could be a 75. I don't know. There's no paper anywhere that describes which tube goes where. Maybe they're underneath the sockets. And it looks like someone has wired. I'm not sure why they did this. There's a bunch of wired together stuff. This is this is loose. Probably need to tighten that screw. And it looks like this screw might have been coming loose. There's some glue on it, so maybe we'll put some Loctite on that later. It's really kind of loose and wiggly. We don't want that. So it looks like actually I can see some numbers. The, the tube type is stamped into the socket. So I can take these tubes out and by looking at this socket, I'll be able to tell what tube that was. I'm not sure if I have that. It's um, 1938, so it's either a 
big pin or a octal tube. Six, what does that say? Six F5. I think I have some of those in stock. That's a octal, 1938. Most of the big pin stuff's out of the way. And what do we have here? We have one can with electrolytic capacitors in it. Looks like a four and a four microfarad. And I think I have some 10 microfarad caps that'll probably be just fine. I'm gonna see if I have anything smaller than that, but they need to be uh, 300 volts rated. Um, let me go see. Before I get started, I wanna, I wanna firm this up before I start turning it which way or that, because I don't want that to come any more loose. Okay, so this is the bottom removed and it looks like we're all original here. These are all original orange Zenith paper caps. <clears throat> it appears that someone replaced the cord on it at some point. You've got this obvious rotten rubber wiring and they've spliced a newer cord to it. So this must have been used a decent amount. I uh, talked with the owner. There's some people insist on restuffing capacitors. And um, I, I just asked him, you know, just to make sure, because I like, you know, this is a historically interesting piece. Do you care that if someone takes it apart someday, they're going to see new capacitors? He's like, I don't care. That's fine. So I'm going to replace each one of these with uh, modern equivalents, which look more like that. I'm doing that because in order to get to the electrolytic capacitors, I'm going to clear out some space here because these are blocking the underside of that. And it looks like the capacitor, I'm going to check the schematic just to make sure, but I'm pretty sure that must be chassis ground. And then we have these two leads. One's going to the rectifier tube. That would make sense. And then the other lead goes, what does that go? That goes to this pin number. What is that? One, two, three, pin number four of the 6F5. And through this capacitor, probably should go to one side of the field coil. Where's the field coil? It's on the speaker coming down through these holes. All right, let's replace these guys first, and then I think it's going to be time to go get the schematic. I want to make sure that I'm replacing these things in correct order. Okay, so here we are partially recapped. We have all the paper caps replaced. There was only four. And we have three electrolytics. We have this guy and then these two. And I wanted to confirm that the chassis was indeed the ground for the capacitor, and it is for the electrolytics, these two pair. And um, so there's one positive end or lead. And then here's the second one, which is going to the rectifier. So since it's chassis ground for either, we can probably relocate them. I could probably move one of those electrolytics over here and keep one over here. It's a little more space. Um, what value is this? this? Is probably like one. I believe this is called a buffer capacitor. I believe it's rated at one microfarad. Let's see, is that gonna pull out? Yeah, there it is, positive. And that goes to chassis ground, so that makes sense. This is a tight little chassis. All right, get out of there. 10 microfarads. I was wrong. All right, well, so be it. So there you have it. We have these three capacitors, electrolytic capacitors to replace, and um, then it'll be time to... I, I did find a 6F5, even though I want to make sure it's a glass Coke bottle one, so this is just to test it to make sure it'll work. Later I'll go to the museum and find one that looks like these other two, maybe even preferably another Zenith brand. Meanwhile, I am going to replace the ratty cord on it with this vintage cloth-covered cord. 
I'm going to keep the original plug that was with it. And um, probably, fingers crossed, within 10 minutes we'll be able to bring this up on a Variac to see if it's got life. All right, so I'm going to call it quits for the evening. I did finish the recap job on this. And I did actually bring it up on the Variac very slowly. And it seems to work. Now, granted, all I'm getting is static out of it because it's missing its mate. This guy over here. Now, why they didn't sell them as a pair of nurse heads, I don't know. <laughs> nurse heads! Anyway, I just like saying radio nurse. Um, so we're off to a good start. I also realized there's wiring going to the switch, which is all rotten. So for right now, I just hooked it up directly. So tomorrow what I'll do is I'll go and dig out some uh, realistic looking vintage wiring. Because if you do take it, the uh, chassis out of the, the case, you will see this at least. Well, obviously you see the whole thing, so that's that, that didn't make any sense. Um, so it's Halloween night, and so I'm going to quit early and go inside, and we're going to sit in front of a fire. Yes, it is Halloween night. Anyway, I've brought the two halves of the nurse helmet in, which my cat is very curious about. And I'm going to use what I always use on bake light, which is Caranuba paste wax. Just good old-fashioned plant-based Caranuba and some soft rags. And luckily, the original surface of the bake light's in good shape. You don't ever want to use a mild, I mean, you don't ever want to use a harsh cleaner on these guys. You'll ruin them. In fact, I'm not going to get them wet at all. And we're just going to bring back the original luster. All right, welcome to day two of working on the Zenith Radio Nurse. And I spent probably about an hour and a half last night working on the case. Again, I was just using Caranuba paste wax. I'm keeping it in here because I'm afraid of having it in my garage. Like I can just see myself knocking it off the shelf. So if I break that, I'll be up shit creek. Anyway, I'm going to go return to the electronics on the bench. And um, I want to finish up the nurse chassis. And then I'll work my way over to the receiver chassis. Okay, so as I mentioned last night, this, the wiring to the switch was kind of hosed. So I need to take the switch off and pop this cover off. It's just held in by friction. It'll install our new wiring and that will go down into the chassis so we can switch the power on and off to the chassis. Okay, so I pulled the back off. You just put a little screwdriver underneath it and you press up and it goes out. I took the old wiring off of the switch, cleaned out the soldering, well the, the holes. I used my solder sucker to clean that out. And what we're going to do is we're going to put this cover, push the wires through it, and then we will solder these wires onto the back of that. And then we'll put the volume pot back in. I found that the volume control actually will not come off unless you loosen the pot. So it's a real tight design. Also, the wire is going to have to come out of this hole. So we'll probably run this through first before attaching to the volume pot. I've never done this before, so I'm talking out loud. And that should make it nice and neat and tidy. Okay, so I got the um, switch, switch, switch rewired. I decided to also cinch up the cabling a little bit underneath here. I want everything to be as tight and snug as possible. No wiggling around. Uh, meanwhile, I did go over to the museum today and I got a more correct looking uh, 6F5 tube to replace this guy. I'm going to give this guy a test. I'm going to bring it up in my Variac. And then I'm going to clean the volume pot and clean the chassis. Um, and then we'll move on to the receiver chassis. But so far, so good. Fingers crossed. Hopefully it'll continue doing its thing. Okay, well I did bring it up slowly and I assume it works. It's only half of a unit right now, but I'm getting a little bit of static. I mean, it's obviously radio interference of some sort, because this is a, a radio, basically, a very basic, basic radio. 
So, we're good on that end. I'm going to clean this up. I know no one's going to ever see the inside of this thing, but, you know, it's a historically interesting piece. should try to do right by it. Okay, now it's time to put the bottom plate back on the chassis. <clears throat> and when I got it, it was missing a few screws. And so I've been finding some that fit. And I um, also want to see if by chance there's a screw that goes through the back of the head here, or the top of the head rather. Because it got a hole in the middle. I just can't remember. I think there's a screw missing there too. So I'm gonna put this back together and then gently put it back into the, the back of the case and see if I can line some stuff up and determine if I'm missing a screw back there. Okay, I'm <clears throat> partially done reassembling. The screws in the front Got those to fit back just fine. I was just studying this just to make sure I understand how it goes back together. We have some long threaded screws that come through the back to the front. We have one here, one here, and one there. And that secures basically the front of the chassis in. But there's one, there's one screw that's missing in the back. So I'm gonna have to carefully find something that's gonna fit. There's a very tight space here. And again, this, this just makes me so freaking nervous to work on it. Like this thing is worth more than my entire collection. So if I break it, no good. So anyway, here we go. <sighs> Shaking like a leaf. Whew. Anyway, I was able to find a screw that fit through the back here. That is the uh, essentially the back of the chassis. So now it's all nicely secured together. And I've got it plugged in. This thing is weird to turn on. There. It's like here in the back. You have to feel it around his neck. <laughs> of course, all we're going to get out of it is static because the other half of this isn't done. That's what we want. Oh, yes. Pleasant static. It's the day after Halloween. I should have just had this thing plugged in. That's creepy enough. I mean, it's cool design and everything, but as a baby, this would horrify me. What I'm going to do is put this away, like, in the house, wrapped up in something. Because I just, it does not need to be out here while I'm working on the other one. I'm just, I knock stuff over all the time. I'm not taking chances. Okay, now that we got the, the expensive part of the thing out of the way, now we have this nice metal box. Guardian ear of the radio nurse. So you can see, obviously, Zenith spent all the money on the design of that nurse head. So I guess when it came to the guardian ear, they just had someone down in the sheet mail room make something that kind of looks like an ear. <laughs> I mean, I guess. <laughs> but it's all nice and stamped steel, so there's nothing really here to break. So let's take the cover off and see what we're dealing with here. <sighs> all right, well, the top of the ear comes off like this. And for some reason, I thought the nurse head was the thing that was in the baby's room. Instead, it's this, because this is obviously, this, this is a microphone. And I sure hope it's not damaged, because it sure looks very fragile. So, I'm going to be very careful working on this one. This one has its own challenge, I think, because it's electronically fragile. I'm not quite sure how I get the chassis out. I'm, I'm assuming it just kind of sits in here, maybe. What is this adjustment? Looks like it's made out of metal of some sort. I don't know. I know nothing about microphones or anything like that. But let me... I can see the electronics under there. Let me see if I can get it to slide it out. And I have to be really careful because I don't want to damage this thing. Okay, it, just, it does just slide out. And what I did... So I put a piece of paper towel and uh, just kind of gently patted it against the uh, microphone so it's not going to whack around. Looks like here we have, looks like two six microfarad, well actually there's one microfarad at 250 volts. to look at the schematic on this guy. I'm not 100% sure what's in there. 
Okay, I finally broke down and got my laptop so I could pull up the schematic for this thing. And luckily it's got the color codes for my capacitors and also it shows me on the schematic where each of these are. Duh, I know you're saying that, but I, sometimes I don't really use schematics that much unless I run into trouble. With this one, I want to make sure I'm definitely doing it right. So let's go overhauling. This thing has a lot of electrolytics in it. There's one here. I believe this is probably the one that's being referred to as a patter electrolytic. And then I think there may or may not be one over here. I won't know until I pull that guy out. But finding grounds for all this is going to be real fun. There's not as much room in this one. Actually, I pulled this guy out of the way temporarily so I could actually get at these wires. It's all chassis ground so I can relocate individual electrolytics if need be. And I'll probably replace this first because what I want to do is start clearing up as much room as I possibly can. Because the newer electrolytics will be smaller, but they're all going to have to fit inside this chassis. So you see what I mean? Sometimes you got to make more room. I'm finding this chassis way more of a challenge than the other one actually is, was, sorry. It's pretty deep and it's pretty jam-packed in here. And granted, I've worked on worse things, but again, I'm trying to do a neat, a, a neat job here. Even though neat, my, my definition is probably very different than yours. I've also noticed we have these things, which being a non-microphone person, I have no clue what that's supposed to do. It looks like something that could go bad though, so I'm wondering if this is actually going to work when I'm done, period. Between the weird microphone and whatever these weird button things are, I, I don't know. I get a feeling that rubber was supposed to have isolated them from something and that, that rubber's not rubber anymore. Might have to get someone in the museum who knows more about it if we want to get this truly working. So I'll do the best I can with the rest of the uh, recapping here. And who knows, maybe we'll get lucky and maybe it will actually still pick up and transmit. Uh, I might have to throw in the towel for the night. I don't want to rush on this, and some of these capacitors are just... They're totally buried in here. It's hard to tell where... Well, I can tell where one ends up there. Usually if you can find one end to snip and you can somehow tug on it, you'll, you'll eventually it'll pull on the leads and you'll see where they go. Then you can do your plan of action. flashlight just stuck to my I got this new flashlight it's magnetic so you can stick things with it hmm I don't know maybe we'll replace one more for the evening then toss in the towel made good progress today probably if all things go well I'll have it done by tomorrow or maybe the night after like I said I'm not rushing on it all right I lied I'm gonna share with you a little couple of tricks I've learned when it comes to weird crap like this First of all, I get a marker, and I mark both ends that I find of the cap, and I confirm it. And then when I have a situation like this, where none of my pliers will get down in there, plan B is you go in with a pair of hemostats. My dad has a friend who is a podiatrist, and when he retires his he gives me a few of them and I use them for doing things like like this <laughs> so probably these guys are like what the hell but that loosened that capacitor so now we can pull it out or see what the value is I'm pretty sure it goes to the ground and both of these tubes have it so it makes sense all right I'm done for the evening getting the one that was underneath all that was seriously one of the most difficult things I've had to do as far as removing a capacitor out of a radio. It was just, you see how big that is? That was underneath all that. And there was no room to pull it out. So I basically had to tweak and bend some of the stuff out of the way just so I could get that out of there. But, so far so good. Only have really two more paper caps and two more electrolytics. And then we can try it out. This is probably going to be tomorrow though. So. Nighty night. All right, welcome to day number three of working on the Zenith Radio Nurse. And continuing from yesterday, I'm working on the transmitter unit, 
which has the microphone, and I did some sleuthing. I asked uh, both my friends from the museum as well as some people on the radio forum, like, what what could these possibly be? And after they told me what they are, it totally makes sense, because I did a little more research about how microphones work, and because that's a subject I know nothing about. These are actually batteries. They are um, carbon zinc batteries, and the schematic doesn't really say what the voltage is, but it doesn't really matter what the voltage is. Um, but what they do is they put a they put a charge on both plates of the mic, and the microphone is a condenser mic. Condenser is an old-fashioned word for capacitor because that's what it's acting like. You have two two uh, plates of the capacitor, well, of the microphone, and uh, these guys put a little charge on those on those two plates, and I mean, I'm not an engineer, and I'm not sure how this works, but essentially, it's it's it doesn't really drain the batteries. The batteries essentially have no load at all, and so that's the reason these guys are semi permanently installed because um, an old zinc carbon battery could sit on the shelf for years, and so imagine having this thing for ten to fifteen years. The batteries would probably still be okay. In fact, I'm curious. I'm going to measure these to see if they have anything left, which I doubt they do. This rubber material, which probably isolated the positives, which is the, the carbon top here, and the negative, which is the body. Well, that's probably allowed that to short out. And uh, so I talked with the owner, and... I think just to see if we can get it working, I'm going to temporarily install, well, not really install, but um, hook up a um, one or two ordinary AA batteries. These are lithium batteries, just to see if it works. And then if we can get it to work, either I'll make something, maybe bend these down a little bit, and make a bottom plate, but I have these, whatever you call them, hearing aid key fob type batteries, and um, again, the voltage is not super critical. I think these are only like half a volt. That's what someone told me, but who knows if that's really true or not. The schematic doesn't make any mention of the voltage. It just says here that they are bias cells. Um, and you can see here, this is where they are in the schematic. And it's key to pay attention here because the positives, both positives go to chassis ground. And the negative, interestingly enough, go to the microphone. And one of them goes through a, they both go through a set of, of, um, Resistors here, R1 and R3. R1 is 2.2 mega ohm. R3 is 1 mega ohm. And this number one here, that is the actual microphone. And you can see the way it's expressed here. It's very much like a giant, huge capacitor, which is really what it is. And then we have a capacitor in between the two. C2, which is a 0 0.01 rated capacitor. That's probably this guy right here. It's hard to tell because everything is so crammed in there. But basically what I need to do is replace the rest of the capacitors. And then I'm going to bring it up slowly to see if it does anything. I doubt it will. Just for shits and giggles, I am going to measure these. I'm curious if they have any voltage left on them. And uh, then we will, I say we, I will then install or clip in some batteries to see if I can power that mic. Because it's not going to work unless those the plates of the microphone material have a, have a, any kind of charge on it. It'll be deaf, essentially. Okay, so the recapping job is done. I gotta say, this is a little bit more of a difficult set to overhaul <clears throat> than my usual stuff, and I'm wondering, perhaps this was such a low production number they didn't quite figure out the kinks. Uh, but stuff I just buried in there, it's hard to get at, but the worst is over, and interestingly enough, I measured basically a third of a volt on both of these guys. They still have life in them, albeit not much. 
just out of curiosity, I want to see what happens when I fire it up with the originals and see if I have any sound at all. Probably it'll be very dim, if at all, or very quiet. Do need to replace the cord. The original one, of course, is long gone. And um, I will do that. And I'm going to bring this up on the Variac just to make sure it works and nothing's going to explode, which I don't think it will. We already know that the other unit, the nurse head unit, works. And so I'll bring it back in here. I'm going to clear my bench. I want to put it way back here. So if it falls over, it's just going to fall on this soft towel. And we'll see what happens. This is exciting. So much more exciting than the usual fab tube sets I work on. Okay, let's give it a test. Let me get my, uh, turn this light off. I want to make sure I can see the filaments. I'm going to bring it up slowly. My Variac, of course, there's no speaker or anything like that. So I'm just, let's see if we have filaments coming up at all. Keep my hand on the throttle. So far, so good. About 50%. There we are. It's hard to see if we got filament. It's about 90%. Really need to get something that that measures current coming off my my variac because otherwise this is kind of stupid. But sitting here hovering at 110 volts and it seems like all is well. I don't, I'm not going to hear anything, but I don't smell anything. All right. I think it's time to uh, give this puppy a test. Actually, I'm just kidding. There's still a paper cap in here. That's probably that 0.01 rated capacitor. And these two must be the incoming battery power. Well, maybe not. Yes, actually, I think it is. No, never mind. Ugh. It's going to the grid of this tube. All right, never mind. I'm not a microphone person. I'm just guessing here. I'll replace that, and then we'll bring the nurse head back in here and see what happens. Oh, that's loud. Well, whatever. I want to see if this works. All right. We're coming up. Hello? Hello? One, two, three, four, five. Hello? 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 One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. <clears throat> okay, well, <clears throat> this is definitely transmitting because when I've touched the grid of that tube, it's picking up over there. And so I, the batteries are completely shot, so there's no charge being applied to the microphone. And the microphone elements, I'm not sure if they're good. So this might be a real big disappointment, having spent so far three days working on this thing. But luckily a lot of the guys in the museum are very curious about it. So if I can't figure out, we have help on the way. We have some real smart people over there, way smarter than me. One way or another, we'll get this guy working. Okay, well it shows me, I don't know what I'm talking about. These are the original batteries, and they were held down in there just like the way that a regular watch battery would be, except these are a little bit different. The problem is, wait a minute, let me think about this. 
I don't know, this is going to be difficult. You see the entire positive, which is the shell of this battery, is chassis ground. And then the positive is that. So in reality, like this bottom of the button has to be touching this. I've got an idea. And it's probably a stupid idea, but I think it might just work. So bear with me. Okay, this may be one point in my life where my inherent redneck engineering has come into good use, which is I was trying to figure out how can I get the, the negatives of these batteries to make contact only with the negative, because the reality is, is that these batteries are the opposite. Like the negative takes up that entire case. Of course, you can put it down in those little cups. But if I did that with these batteries, it'd short itself out. And uh, so I cut out these little pieces of sheet metal from uh, a, a piece of radio, of all things, and sanded it down and soldered them on the ends here. So now it should be providing some voltage to the microphone. Now, if the microphone, if it doesn't work now, then either it's out of tune, as in I need to make some adjustments here or the microphone element's bad and that way if, if that's the case then probably for me I'm gonna have to probably call it quits in the project and uh, I'll resume filming uh, with um, other people at the museum who will help out with the microphone but nevertheless uh, so far so good let's take this cover off and power it back on see if we get any results also I'm wondering if this is too close or even if it was, it should make a horrible noise. At least something. Let me turn this down. This is a little too loud. Apparently it's not on. All right. Okay, we got filament coming up. I think I do, don't I? Uh-oh. Huh. Maybe it was on initially. It's just this, this light so bright I can't tell. All right. I feel like I'm doing something stupid here. Like, why is this not turning on? All right, hold on. Apparently the plug had come jerked out of the outlet, so... So now that we got both of these working, will I pick up anything? Hello, test one, two, three, one, two, three. Test one, two, three. Hmm, not really getting anything. Hello, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, five, six. Mm, got filament on everything. Let me turn this up a little bit more. Hello, test one, two, three. Test one, two, three. Well, I'm touching this, and I'm getting a little bit of feedback. Of course, that could be just going through the grid of this tube. There is an adjustment on the side that probably adjusts the frequency, but I'm not sure if that's really our problem. This is unfamiliar territory to me. Test one, two, three, test one, two, three. 
Test one, two, three, test one, two, three, nothing. All right, let me check to make sure that the, the cells are actually putting out some voltage. I got a little bit better of a setback here. Um, I did power it up and I was getting funky B plus readings, like incorrect readings. And I've looked over everything here and I don't see anything out of whack. First thing I checked were these resistors that come right off of in the B plus chain and they're measuring fine. So I'm gonna check my pin connections, see if I have a shorted tube, a rectifier, something. It's a little disappointing. Now, if I can't get it working, this is too valuable and important of a piece for me to um, throw in the towel. I will take it to the museum and we will document what others do to get it working, but we will get it working, trust me. Okay, well, I'll test the tubes. The tubes are fine, there's no shorts. I tightened the tube socket pins and I measured all the stuff around the B plus area, namely these giant resistors here. And they're supposed to be 2200 ohms. One of them measures like 2400, another one measures like 2300. So it's not enough to really affect B plus that much. Um, when I actually touched, when I was measuring ground to one of the electrolytic positives, it snapped at me, which makes me think that something isn't grounded in here of what I don't know. Um, this is a simple chassis. Um, I've, already, I've tried resoldering a few things, but I don't see anything that's crazy out of the, out of the blue that would make this do that. But I'm only going to go so far, and if I can't figure it out, then um, probably someone else should take the helm, even though it's kind of embarrassing, but sometimes you got to know when to uh, ask for help. Okay, something is definitely pulling this down. It's pulling the voltage down. Uh, it's annoying. I bet if I touch any of these positives, it's going to snap. So you watch this. Yep. Something is pulling down my B+. Plus. Something's pulling down my voltage. What could it be? Hmm. This is sort of aggravating. Poke around up here somewhere. That is not a good connection at all. I don't think that'd matter. It's going to ground. That's just, this is going to ground. Sorry, I know this is boring as hell, guys. I'm just checking and rechecking my work to see if I got everything grounded properly. Let me go back here and resolder some of this stuff. Okay, but like it's not really that's that's what we're transmitting and that's why it sounds like it's not really that good. Hello, hello. You can hear it. Barely. It's flying. The mic is not very happy. No. Nope. So probably the I think the tin foil's shorting or fucked up. No. Hello, hello, hello. hello. It's not it's not clean. It's, you know. Now, oh, we're also biasing it 50% more than it should be biased. The via the batteries. You see, they wanted one volt, and we've got a volt and a half on the on negative. So the what probably well, actually, is we're probably cutting the tube off, close to cut off. That's the other reason it's distorting like that. Let's do this. Let me go straight to the grid. <clears throat> Probably gonna be loud. This is get rid of all the electronics. Oh, come on. Probably alligator clip's too small. 
Yeah. Here, I'll hold it there. Just hold it there. Hello, 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 hello. There. That's not too bad. That's reasonable. Yeah. Okay. What it is is a bias issue. Okay, so fucking cell battery. Oh, that's right. Basically, we're 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 causing the. So that's a problem. So I need to look. I need to look at. Uh, I need to monitor with on AC. Monitor. <coughs> okay. So so basically, we're cutting off the. Yeah, the tube the, is uh, coming. Yeah. So let's look at the. Uh, This is the first plate. And, uh, lots of hum, of course. Oh, look, nice clean hum here. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's because. Uh, hello, hello. Oh, what, what a frequency. Wait a minute, let's go back to it. It did react a little bit. Yeah, I'm looking at that's a 300 kilohertz. Yeah, you're looking at the yeah, right there. there we go. Yeah. Hello, do you see anything? Hello? No, it's I moving up a little bit. 2% modulation. All right. No, the envelope is not really. Yeah, it's not. It, see, there's a problem right there. That stage is being uh, almost cool. driven to cut off. <clears throat> It's because too much fucking voltage off the yes. the, beast, the, off the little those batteries. Cells. Yeah. We're driving the tube to cut off. Oh, okay. What's it? What is it? Crap. Is there like a battery? What's what's it, what's what's where's the battery? The They're right there. They're right here. Huh? Oh. Like oh, little button oh, cells. Those are the oh, the, oh the little. Yeah, okay. we need oh, a one volt a... battery. Do you have a uh, about dead one of these? Is a one volt? See, it's Good one luck. and a half. Good luck. And Let if you see put if a resistor any... across it to drop it or a divider, you're going to burn the batteries down. You can't have any current because these are <clears> bias <throat> batteries. You're supposed to... Okay, we figured out what it was. They're... All right, Rajesh is going to demonstrate. Yes, it works. It works. Yes, it works. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, this concludes this episode. The owner is going to clean up the case, but electronically we have it working. And it's probably one of the only uh, working radio nurses in the country. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you guys next time. <laughs>